Hello everyone, and welcome to my absolute beginner's guide to Source Filmmaker. This is uh, your host, Films Fanatical, and I decided to show you how I animate an SFM. I will make a series on how to do this also, and let me go over some basics. I have a little bit of a speech impediment, so please forgive me for that, alright? Try to listen to me as carefully as you can, and as good as you can, because I will be teaching you every little bit on how to use SFM from beginning to end. But it's going to be in parts, so it's not going to be uh, straight up everything at the start. Also, the left click, red circle. If it's a red circle on the screen, it means left click. If it's a blue circle on the screen when I click, it means I'm right clicking. SFM requires a little bit of a good computer to run. Uh, eh, if you have a maximum of 3 gigs of RAM or a 4 gig RAM computer, Probably a dual core or even a quad core, or you could run the SFM, but single core machines and below are going to have a little bit of trouble running SFM. You, you also want to make sure you have a good graphics card with at least 512 megabytes of VRAM. Anyway, I'm getting uh, too techy here. If you came here to learn about SFM, not me talk about a lot of stuff but anyway here's my setup for SFM and when you run SFM first come up to this screen this is your primary viewport and this is your console uh, the, the console it, it is very useful at times so keep that in mind primary viewport is where you view everything really it, you can have a secondary viewport but I'll add that Maybe sometime soon, I don't know. It, I use as a primary viewport anyway. But the primary viewport's for your work camera and your camera camera. Let's just say you have a regular camera. And your regular camera, camera one, is the camera you're going to be re recording in. While your work camera is not seen, but with your work camera, you can go around the main camera and work on things without having to reposition the main camera. Anyway, down here in timeline, you will see picture, sound, dialogue, music, effects, overlay, and effects again. The picture part it is for or the video itself from beginning to end. You could extend this if you want the video to be over a minute by holding down left click and dragging this piece. And this piece. And keep in note that I'm going to be using Control Z a lot. Control Z is for undoing uh, things in SFM. I'm so sorry, I'm not that good at speeches, everyone. Please forgive me. Um, anyway, sound, dialogue. Dialogue is for, for putting speech in your characters via lip sync. I'll, we'll cover that in another tutorial. Music is for adding music in your video. Effects under sound is for adding sound effects. Your overlay and effects is for adding an overlay to the camera lens. We'll go over that next time too. This is your motion tool. This is the rotation tool. This is the movement tool. And this is the, the selection tool. Honestly, I only use these three tools when animating. The motion tool which I know it's called screen R, but I call it the motion tool because you have to use this when you're using the motion editor. I'm going too far ahead of myself right now. 
Rotation tool, motion tool, and movement tool is for moving models within the scene. Like say, if I spot on an entity, light, camera, or even a model into the scene, I would use these three to move them. The movement tool is for going up and down, left and right. The rotation tool is for rotating it, it, it in numerous uh, fashions and ways, like rotating it to the left, rotating it to the right, backward, forward, diagonal, vertical, horizontal, and you get the picture. The motion editor tool, you, you can do all the things that the move and rotate tool can use and do. I'm not really the best at speeches at all. The procedurals are another tool that we're going to be using later on. These are the tools that really help the animations become uh, really good looking. The element viewer is a more advanced type of viewer for the animation set editor. I'll go over these two in a moment too. Now, in order to load a map in the SFM, you're either going to right click and go to load map in the view selection, or you're going to go to file, which is at the top left of the screen, left click, and go to load map, left click. For now, we're going to do mod filter at all mods and use the TF Movie Stage.bsp. It'll take a moment to load, but once you're in, you'll see you're in. Now that the map is loaded, you're probably wondering how the heck do I move the camera and put cameras in different directions. Well, you see, this is perfect time to teach you about cameras. You hold left click in the primary viewport, and you could simply look around. But if you use W, A, S, and D, which are in current PC games to move around, you will move the camera around. Continuously hold left click in the primary viewport to look around. Use W, A, S, and D to move the camera around in Source Filmmaker. I'm going to set the camera right here. Next, I'm going to click on where it says Work Camera, but not exactly on it. I'm going to click the small arrow here and go to Change Scene Camera new camera. So after that, our first actual camera for the animated scenes and everything we're going to be using in the Filmmaker section of Source Filmmaker is spawned into the world. When you click camera 1, you will go back to your work camera. The square in the middle of those lines, as seen right here, is the camera's view. The lines here is how wide the camera view is in covering the area. For right now, we're just going to keep it there. We're going to put a model into SFM to animate. And I'm going to show you the differences in the clip editor, motion editor, and graph editor, including basic animations that you can do with NPCs in the next video.